Hello, my name is Pasquale Giuseppe Cristoforo Lababera. I'm a missionary to Ukraine, and you're listening to Heaven Bound. I see a sea. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. On behalf of the good folks here at Calvary Bible Church, I'm Doug Benedict, and along with Pastor Jim Jenkins, who will be joining us just a little bit later on. We are so excited that you're joining us once again for another great episode of Heaven Bound. And if you don't know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die, we are so glad you tuned in, and we hope you hear something today that helps you realize that you're lost without Jesus, and you need to trust in him to get you to heaven. With this being the first Sunday of the month, we'll begin our services this morning at 9 o'clock with our fellowship breakfast. Then at 9.30, we'll have Sunday school. 10.30, we'll have the morning service. And then at noon, we'll break for lunch. We'll resume again this afternoon at 1 o'clock for the afternoon service, and then come on back Wednesday night for midweek prayer and Bible study session, and that begins at 7 o'clock Wednesday evening. Now, you might say, I, I want to come, but I don't know how to get there. Well, you can put in your GPS, 6968 Sweeney Road, Greg, New York. That'll get you just about here, but you will have to pay attention when you turn on Sweeney Road, you can also take these super easy directions. Coming out of Boonville, head north on Route 12 and make a right-hand turn on a Burdick's Crossing Road. Coming out of Lowville, head south on Route 12 and make a left-hand turn on a Burdick's Crossing Road. Coming out of West Leiden, head north on 26. Keep straight on to 12D, head north on Route 12 and make a right-hand turn on to Burdick's Crossing Road. And Burdick's Crossing Road is located right near the Valley Brook Drive-In Movie Theater. So look for that sign and turn right there on a Burdick's Crossing Road. Now take Burdick's Crossing Road all the way to the end. Make a left-hand turn onto Gregg Road, head up the hill, and make your first right-hand turn onto Sweeney Road. And we are up there about 200 yards on the right-hand side. We would love to have you come join us. If you've never been here, we love meeting new people. And if it's been a while since you've been here, we'd love to have you back. And with meeting new people and bringing old people back, why don't you put on your calendar June 16th. We're going to be celebrating 39 years here at Calvary Bible Church. It's going to be a great time. We'll start at 10 o'clock that morning instead of our normal time. And it's just going to be a lot of extra stuff going on. Some great preaching because we can't leave that out. Plus some candy throwing, a lot of specials and just a great time with each other. So now if you want to come to any of those times, but you don't have a ride, give us a call today. Our phone number here is 315-348-6271. Or you can even send an email to cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. And we'll find someone near you to come pick you up and give you a ride. And if all else fails, and don't use this as an excuse not to come, because you miss out on so much. We do stream all of our services live at cbclewiscounty.com, as well as on livestream.com and Facebook Live. On our webpage, which again is cbclewiscounty.com, we do have past services as well that you can go on, download them, subscribe to our podcast, and watch services like the ones we just finished with Brother Cliff Bennett. And if you weren't able to make it, I highly recommend going on there, watching them, and get a tremendous blessing. The blessing that he gave us as he preached, again, from God's Word, which we do believe cover to cover and everything in between. So if you're looking for a good Bible-believing church, why don't you come join us today? Get 9.30, 10.30, and 1 o'clock this afternoon. Now, how much time do you think you have on this earth? 
you ever stop and think that maybe tomorrow might be the last day you're here? Well, there's a lie of the devil, and Preacher's going to come talk about what that lie is, and that kind of ties in with what I just said. So open your Bibles to John chapter 8, beginning in verse 44. And as you're turning, let's listen to the Neelands as they sing, I'll Talk to My Father. There's one special way I can show you And that was, is the Neelands. That's from a, that's, that is a kind of old, I'll bet that song's 20 years old. I'll talk to my father for you. Well, here we are the first Sunday of June already. Year is rapidly going by. And two weeks from today, is our anniversary Sunday. And again, I like uh, many of you hear the program and you you really don't go to church anywhere. And so, boy, we sure would like to invite you to come out that day. Be a big day for us. June the 16th, it's also Father's Day. 
And so you come try to be with that big meal that day. And so we'll be looking forward to that in John chapter 8 and verse 44. Ye of your father, the devil. Now, Jesus is speaking to some religious folks here. And he said, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Now, kind of, you know, strong words here that Jesus is giving to the Pharisees. He's having a somewhat lengthy discussion with them. John chapter 8, the woman taken in adultery, they had tried to deceive Jesus and they tried to trick him. But So then he gets into this long conversation with them. The Pharisees were the conservatives of Jesus' day. Uh, the Sadducees were the liberals. The, the Sadducees really did not believe much. They didn't believe in heaven. They didn't believe in, no, they didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe in uh, spirits, the soul. Um, they were pretty liberal. The Pharisees, on the other hand, were what we would call religiously conservative in that they adhered to the Old Testament law strictly. It's like that one remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy and and it was set apart. In the Old Testament there was a man that gathered sticks for a fire on the Sabbath day and he was put to death. So the Pharisees had come up with thirty nine different things about the Sabbath day, because on the Sabbath day it said, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, for there and thou shalt do no work. So the Pharisees had come up with 39 different things what they considered work. Oddly enough, healing somebody on the Sabbath day was considered work. That, And that's why they got so ma upset and mad at Jesus because many times Jesus healed people on the Sabbath day and I think just to stick their uh, ox and you couldn't carry your bed on the Sabbath day. A couple times... Jesus healed people on the Sabbath day and told them to carry their bed. And of course, that upset the Pharisees. They were very conservative religiously. Now, they didn't believe the truth, but they were still what you would call conservative religiously. And Jesus here in John chapter 8 and verse 44, he says, you're of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer, etc. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Satan spreads many lies. One of Satan's biggest lies is this. You have plenty of time to get ready to meet God. Now, the Bible says, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. There is, you know, the attitude, well, I, I've got a whole lifetime to get ready. Well, not really, because I can tell you from ex experience that looking back over my life, it has gone by really, when I look back, it's, it's been really quick. It seems to have just flown by. Someone in our church said this to me once, that some days the day seems long, but the months are really short. And that's true. Well, Satan propagates the lie. Well, you have plenty of time to get ready. I've met people before, and you know their, their thing is, well, I've got lots of time to get ready in my life. I'll get saved at the end of my life of course, nobody knows when the end, end of life is. No one knows when we will die. The Bible says it's appointed a man once to die. There is an appointed time of our death. That is why Stonewall Jackson, that famous Confederate general, said, I'm as safe in bed as I am on the battlefield, that God knows the hour of my death. God knows the hour of, and I'm speaking now, God knows the hour of my death. 
it's appointed when a man wants to die. Nobody knows when they're going to die, but yet the devil says you have plenty of time. He says to the young person, you, you have plenty of time. He says to the teenager, you have plenty of time. He says to the young adult, you have plenty of time. He says to the middle-aged person, you have plenty of time. And the Bible says this, he that hardens his heart, oft time being reproved shall suddenly be cut off and that without remedy. Here, here's a, a, a Bible principle truth that the more you harden your heart toward God, the harder it will be for you to believe what God has to say. So what do you mean by that? Well, statistically, and again, you know, 67.9% of statistics are made up on the spot. But anyway, statistically, the older you get in life, more years that pass by, the less likely it is that you will respond to God's invitation. I read somewhere that once you, you get past the age of 21, now I'm not saying that people don't respond to God's invitation after 21, but it definitely becomes a whole lot harder. You become set in your ways. You love what you do. And that's why Satan's lie is to young people, you have plenty of time to get ready because the more you reject God, the harder it becomes to accept God. And again, statistically, that's proven to be true. That my dad was like, oh, he was 38, 39, something like that. The chances of someone 38, 39 years old getting saved are very slim. That's why Satan says to young people, you have plenty of time to get ready. And I've heard all kinds of illustrations. I've read one. Uh, George Truitt was pastor of First Baptist in Dallas and had a long ministry there. And he tells of a man in his church who his entire life when his kids were growing up, we'll say it like that, his life when his kids were growing up had no time for God, no time for church. And he's taught his kids that when he got a little bit older in life, he continually, constantly begged his kids to, for them to go to church with him, and they simply were not interested. You see, the older you get, the less interested you become. That's why the wisest man in the world, so who's that? Solomon. Solomon said, remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Remember God when you're younger until... As he says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1, while the evil days draw not nigh. Because he said there will come a time when in, in Solomon's picturesque manner, you know, we get older and we lose our teeth, we lose our hearing, we lose our sight, we lose our hair, we lose our strength. And according to Solomon, we just will have no desire. Again, it's not that older people do not respond to the gospel, but if you're listening to me this morning, the older you get, the harder it is to respond to the gospel. You become set in your ways. You, I'm sure you've heard that expression. Uh, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Why? Because people become set in their ways. The older we get, the less likely it is that we will respond to God. But yet Satan, who is the father of lies, Jesus said he, he is the father of lies. Satan is incapable of telling the truth. Jesus said again in verse 44, he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. There's no truth in him. He's a liar. The Bible says in Revelation, I think it's chapter 12, it says that he goes about to deceive the whole world. Satan is trying to deceive the world. 
He's done a pretty good job at it. Because Satan is a very crafty liar. In Genesis chapter 3, when we read about him tempting Eve. Now, God told Adam and Eve, there's only one rule here. Just one. There's just one rule you have to obey. That rule was you cannot eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is in the midst of the garden, the midst of the paradise of God. You can't eat of it. So what did the devil do? He came to Eve and said, well, wait a minute now. God knows that, that the day you eat of that tree, your eyes will be open to know both good and evil. God doesn't want you to know that. God doesn't want you to know good. Look, and he deceived her. He lied to her. And we know the account. The one rule. All she had to do was follow one rule. And Satan attacked that rule, lied to her, deceived her, and she ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And then she gave to Adam. Now, Adam was not deceived. The Bible says Adam was in the transgression because Adam was not deceived about what he was about to do. You see, the devil didn't have to lie to Adam. Adam already knew what was going on. But he lied to Eve. Satan tells people, you have plenty of time to get ready. I've met a lot of old people in my life. I mean, older than me. Who are so set in their ways. They don't want to talk about God. They have no time for God. They have no time for Christ. They have no time for religion. I was in, when I lived in San Angelo, Texas, I was out visiting one day and I came across an, a man and he was very pleasant until I asked him, sir, do you know for sure you're going to heaven when you die? He began to curse and swear at me. He began to use all kinds of, and he just said, I'm not interested in that going to heaven stuff. Boy, I know someone who said if they had known me when they were younger, I'm telling you, dear friend, you're listening to me today. Time is of the essence. In real, in mortgage reality, if, if your mortgage is due on July the 1st, it better be there. If, it is, if time is of the essence, it better be there July 1st. I'm saying to you today, listen to me, that one of the great lies that Satan puts out there. Hey, young person, you have all the time in the world to get right with God. And that isn't true. Because we don't have any idea how much time we have. I look around at how many people that I've known my age that are no longer here. They're gone. They're gone. Died. We read in our own community around our Lowville, Boonville area, how many young people overdose you know, it's a real problem. It's a real problem anywhere in America, but young people who are dead, why? Well, they just overdosed on drugs. Got all the time in the world, but time ran out. Not as much time as they thought. I remember speaking with, uh, she was an elderly lady. She was 80-some years old when she died and she passed away. I asked her one time, I said, does life seem to have been short to you? And she just looked at me and said, it seems like yesterday I was a little girl. My dear friend, I'm telling you, one of the great lies that Satan puts out is you have all the time that you need. Don't get right with God today. Don't trust the Lord Jesus as your Savior today. Put it off tomorrow. The Bible says now is the accepted time. Now 
is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, but today. You understand, I think, you're not guaranteed another heartbeat. You're not guaranteed another breath. It is only by the grace of God that you'll wake up tomorrow morning breathing. Satan says, no, you have lots of time. I remember when I was in college, math teacher that I had, his 12-year-old son had a heart attack while he was swimming in the pool and, and died. 12 years old, a heart attack. Well, only old people. No, anybody can. Friend, listen to me. Satan is a liar. He's the father of it. There's no truth in him. Satan has all kinds of lies that he, he spreads around. But this one, this one, you have plenty of time. Take your time. Eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow, another day. I often say this in church. One day you're going to die. It probably won't be today. Probably won't be. If you're listening to me, probably won't be. But one day it will be. And we keep putting off and putting off and putting off and putting off and putting off that which we ought to do. What is it that we need to do, preacher? We need to get, we need to be right with God. Simon Peter said to another Simon, he said, thy heart is not right in the sight of God. How do I get a right heart, preacher? How do I get a right heart? This way, you can't do it. You cannot do it yourself, friend. Because it's already done. It's already finished. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. All we need to realize is, number one, I'm a sinner. I'm lost without hope. Number two, Jesus paid the price for me that God loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for me, to pay my sin debt so that I could go free. Satan says, no, there's got to be other. No, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Friend, why not trust Jesus today? You're not, you're not guaranteed about tomorrow. You're not sure about tomorrow. Man, I was watching a sports program, and, and I saw come across the bottom last Sunday uh, a Minnesota coach. I don't know whether it was uh, what coach he was, but his wife and young daughter were killed last Sunday in a car accident. Some drunken slob fool driving the wrong way on an interstate hit him head on and killed them. They didn't suspect that morning they would be dead. We're not sure about another breath. Satan says, you got plenty of time. Jesus says, Satan is a liar. Why not trust him today? Why not call upon him today? Why not make your heart right with God today by trusting the Lord Jesus Christ? Today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow, not next week, today, right now. Call upon him, dear friend. Trust Jesus as your Savior today because listen to me, tomorrow just might be too late. Do you ever think about what it would be like if tomorrow never came? Waiting for the time where you think you have all the time in the world, you might come across where tomorrow won't come. Today could be the last day. This could be the last hour. You could be on your way to church this morning and never make it. We're not promised any certain amount of time. So why would you wait to the very end? Would you like to know today, right now, that you're going to heaven when you die? Why don't you give us a call today? Our phone number here is 315-348-6271. Or you can even send an email to cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, why don't you come join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. 
Lord willing, we will catch you again next week on Heaven Bound.